The term Southern Rock covers a wide range of bands and a large portion of musical history. It started really in the early 1970s with the Allman Brothers. Um, its peak of popularity was probably the 70s and 80s. Um, but still bands nowadays are considered as playing in the Southern Rock style. The Allman Brothers came out of blues and rock and country um, and they're the real catalyst for the southern rock style um, followed closely by Lynyrd Skynyrd. In this video I'm going to look at some of the classic southern rock bands like Lynyrd Skynyrd, uh, the Marshall Tucker Band, Blackfoot and I'm going to look at the um, tone and style of bass that was being played in these bands and I'll also see if there are any kind of common musical devices that are used a lot in the bass lines. All the riffs that we cover in this lesson are on a PDF, you can get that for free, it's in standard notation and tab and you can download that by filling out the form that's in the description, just click that link. <laughs> First of all, let's check out the bass line from Cattle Drive by the Marshall Tucker Band. This was released in 1980 in their album called Tenth. The bass line was recorded by Tommy Caldwell, um, one of the original members of the band. Now he played a lot with a pick and he sometimes played with fingerstyle, but his fingerstyle was more with a thumb actually. Um, so he kind of plucked the strings with his thumb, like the rest of the band actually on guitar as well. Check out this short clip of Tommy Caldwell just playing a solo um, and look at his hand, there's some really good close up shots there. So he uses his thumb and you can also see him using his fingers um, and his thumb like you would do for a pick to strum the strings. I really enjoyed watching that bit of footage. It was great to see the close up of Tommy's hands um, and especially that kind of strumming and the use of the thumb. So he used kind of a few techniques there in his plucking hand. The main riff goes round A minor for two bars, F for two bars, G for two bars and then A minor for two bars. The bass line is a steady groove with a kind of repeated rhythmic pattern that focuses on the root and the fifth. I'll play it through for you finger style so you can hear it. And you can use the pick as well. So that's entirely up to you. You can use the pick or you can use your fingers. It's a really nice groove. You've got kind of starts on A and then up to E the fifth and then up to G. So we've got these kind of, that's the, that's a flattened seventh actually. Okay. So we've got this kind of box shape here again. So E, D, G and A, okay? Kind of like the minor pentatonic without the third. And then, so that's slightly different that second bar. Okay, so those first two bars. And then it goes to F. So that's using the fifth as well. That's the root and that's the fifth. So fifth is above or below. So it's using it below, okay? Moving up to G. So that riff on F. So we've got that kind of rhythm. We've got that throughout the riff, okay? Okay. 
So that's moving up to G. And then on G, root fifth with the fifth underneath. So we've got these kind of wall cuts every time it changes chord. So the G one's relatively simple. G, G sharp, back to A. Okay, so it's the same sort of pattern really when you change chord, the same rhythmic pattern, um, just for the F and the G you play the fifth below. So it's quite a busy line. Um, you really have to get it under the pick if you're using a pick there. Uh, it's a really nice riff. You've just got to keep that flowing uh, and just really lay it down in the pocket. If you're enjoying this lesson, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by pressing the red subscribe button on the corner of the screen. And if you click the bell and select all, you'll get notified as soon as I release a new video. We're now going to look at the bass line from The Hunt by Lynn Skinner. And um, this has got Leon Wilkerson on bass. Um, he played throughout uh, the band's career. Um, not on the first album though, apparently. Um, but yeah, he's a really great player. First of all, I'll show you a clip of Leon Wilkerson playing with the Charlie Daniels band. He's playing a bass solo, so you can check out his playing style. <laughs> So you can see Leon is using a pick in that clip. Um, so I think he fundamentally used a pick, uh, although the tune we're going to look at doesn't sound like pick to me, but it might be pick with a really kind of bassy tone. He's certainly got a unique technique as well in his left hand. Really interesting to kind of see that. Let's now look at the bass riff from The Hunt. Um, as I said, it sounds to me actually when I isolate the bass like it's played finger style. Um, I'm not totally sure. It could just be pick with um, the treble knocked right off and the bass boosted. This main riff goes round a bar of B minor and a bar of A and just repeats that over and over. It's actually quite tricky to play. There's this really nice slide. Okay, so he slides from the B, so we play that really on the E string. Okay, so there's some things that were repeated there. The first um, riff is you slide down from the B and then I catch the B here on the um, second fret of the A string. Okay, that's based on a B minor chord there. So you've got um, B minor, D, F sharp, which is down there. So that's just the, the minor arpeggio. A in the next bar, so that's B, D, B, F sharp, C sharp, down to A. Okay, it's quite fiddly. And then we've got A, G sharp, E, F sharp, E. So that bar. Again. So if you're learning this, break it down uh, first into one bar and then into those two bar patterns. So it's basically um, um, four lots of two bars. Okay, uh, when we look at bars five and six, um, it's identical actually to bars one and two. So once you've learned um, one and two, you can play five and six as well. Okay, and then onto bars three and four, slide again from the B. Okay, there, and play the B there, and then I slide out with my second finger, D, F sharp, D, C sharp, down to A. Okay. And then this lick. Okay, 
So those two bars. Okay, you just kind of just have to practice that little lick on its own from the A up the B. B, D, B, E, E, A. Set for the A. And those two bars. Okay, quite fiddly. And then bars five and six, as I said, are the same as bars one and two. And then the last two bars. Uh, starts the same, this um, this is bar 7, starts the same as bar 3, and then that last bar, so those last two bars, I'll play you the whole lot. Okay, that's really fiddly and you really have to um, really play that in the pocket, sit right back on that. If you rush that one, it just doesn't sound right. So it sits right back, it's a really nice groove. That's kind of one of the things about Lina Skinner that I really like is their kind of groove, their laid back groove. And that's quite common in Southern Rock as well. We're now going to look at Highway Song by Blackfoot. This features Greg T. Walker on bass. He actually played on a couple of the Lina Skinner albums as well. So he plays with a real virtuoso style. Um, he prefers finger style. So check out this video. This is Greg T. Walker just um, playing in the studio. <laughs> So you can see him there playing with finger style, um, and he's got a kind of custom job J bass there. Uh, it didn't look like a Fender, so it's another brand of jazz bass. The bass line from Highway Song is really nice. It's kind of quite busy and melodic in a way. Um, but again, this one you really need to play right back behind the beat. Uh, it just doesn't sound right if you play it on the beat or in front of it. So you really lay back and try and lock in with the rest of the band. The first two bars are half a bar of E minor, and then a, a beat of C and a beat of D. And then we go to half a bar of C, a D with an F sharp in the bass, and then half a bar of E minor and half a bar of B7. So as I said, it's quite a busy bass line. It fits really nicely, I really like this song. Um, so we're kind of starting on a low E and then we're walking up to C. Okay. So we've got F sharp, G, A, B, and then C up to D, okay? The ba 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 ba. On the D we've got a C on the very first of those three notes, so. Okay, again. And then. Okay, so there's similar kind of rhythmic patterns. So we start on the high E for the second bar. And then we've got E, D, A, B, C, okay. Um, I'll use an open A there. And then same pattern on C. And then. Okay, 
So that uh, those first two bars, three, four. And then the second line. So again, that's the kind of scale there. Okay, just ascending scale. Okay. Okay, so the third bar, C, B, A, G, F sharp, F sharp, F sharp, G, F sharp, E. And then last bar. So E, 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 G, A, B, B, A, G, F sharp, E. Okay, I'll play that whole thing again. Three, four. I really like that bass line. Um, I like the patterns in it. Um, it flows nicely and it's got some really nice ideas in it too. Last of all, we're going to look at Gator Country. This is by Molly Hatchett. Um, the bass player is Banner Thomas. He was the original bass player in the band um, and he's also credited with this song as well. Here's a short clip of Banner Thomas playing in 1979. Banner Thomas, you can see he was playing a P bass, um, he was playing a pick there, he played pick and finger style. The riff from Gator Country is based on G, okay, it's just a kind of repeated riff that changes slightly in different places in the song. It's quite fast, okay, it's just G, D, E, G. G, D, E, okay, it repeats that for three bars. It's a bit of a tongue twister for your fingers. Um, so you just gotta just play it slowly. And then speed it up. Sometimes it's about knowing what your plucking hand's doing, okay? And obviously you can play it with a pick as well. Okay, it's actually quite tricky to pick as well. Um, so I would um, prefer to use my fingers for that. And I kind of rock between my first finger for those first two notes. Kind of hop between them. Find that's the, the cleanest way to play that riff. So just try it slow with me. Three, four. And the last bar, so you're kind of, you've got your little finger ready on F, F, E, D, and then hop down to C, and then back to D. Okay, so you shift twice there. Shift, shift, okay. Okay, I'll play at the full speed. Okay, so yeah, quite a fiddly riff there. It's really great, and that's the kind of main riff, and it changes slightly in the verse. 
So after looking at these four tunes and these kind of classic southern bands, I was actually really surprised at how busy the bass lines were and how tricky some of them were. Um, obviously these bands also played kind of tunes with simpler bass lines with that steady southern rock kind of eighth note groove, um, like ZZ Top for example played a lot more of that kind of simpler bass lines just laying down that groove. Um, but these kind of tunes a lot more riff based. Um, I think the southern rock sound progressed um, to that kind of more of that ZZ Top sound. Um, but yeah, there's lots of stuff going on, lots of kind of virtuoso playing there, um, and that surprised me quite a lot. I purposely left the Allman Brothers out of this video um, because really they're the kind of innovators of this sound, um, and I thought that they deserved a video um, by themselves, so I'll do that at some point in the future. In terms of bass choices, I chose J bass. I think it's kind of, um, I can kind of get the sound that I want with that and it works well with the pick sound as well. Um, I've kind of got a boost of the treble a little bit on that. Um, but really you can use anything. As we've seen, there was the kind of the Fender Bird bass. Um, I think there was a preference for J basses and P basses just because there are a lot more of those basses around at the time in that era. Um, but really just use whatever you want. Um, different players, as you can see from the videos, had a slightly different sound. Um, and again, some use the pick, some use fingers. So there isn't just one set sound uh, for Southern Rock. Um, it's entirely up to you. Some real iconic bass players use fingers and some use pick. So um, really I'd recommend that you get both techniques under your fingers. Um, you might play fingerstyle and for the odd tune you might think, oh that sounds nice on pick, or you might be a pick player, it really doesn't matter. Um, but I suggest looking at both of those techniques and learning how to do them. One of the things that is really important to get is that laid back southern rock feel. Um, so just make sure that you're playing with a relaxed feel. Okay, listen to the guitar and the drums. I find if you lock in with those other players, um, then it's easier to kind of get that placement right. You don't want to be rushing at this stuff. It just doesn't sound good at all. Well, I hope this lesson helped to give you an introduction to Southern Rock or just a recap if you already play it and you already listen to all these bands. I'd love to hear what you thought of the video. Uh, let me know below in the comments and also if you've got anything to add, any interesting facts or um, just information about Southern Rock that you think people might benefit from, then also leave me um, that in the comment below. If you felt that you got value at this lesson, you can always buy me a coffee, they're $5. Um, the link's below in the description or you can see it here at the bottom of the screen. And go and check out my website, gbshed.com. I've got loads of extra base resources, some free resources. Um, you can buy t-shirts, low and lover t-shirts and other t-shirts there. There's my base courses and books. Um, you can get in touch with me as well via the contacts page. Please help me out by liking and sharing this video and of course by subscribing to my channel. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. Hopefully see you very soon in the next video.